Radiance Band. Gentlemen, welcome to a GameStar presentation tonight. We will be bringing you round one of the First Blood Dying Indian band. Dota 2 tournament. My name is Cold Blood, and joining me in the studio, it will be Maya Arcana. How are you, bud? Hello, everyone. I'm fine. Yeah. How are you? Very good. I'm excited for this. I uh, have never cast Indian players, as far as I know, but uh, to be in an Asian Gaming League tournament. They must be pretty good, I would imagine. So, looking forward to some Visage plays if he makes it through the bands. That's right. And we are already, I mean, um, typically in the Southeast Asian scene, they have been banning out the Bristol back quite a bit recently. Um, he's really, really strong with that physical damage from the Quill Spray. Especially those stacks early game will just, just you know, um, destroy you, basically. No, yeah, he does do a lot of ambient damage and then can build tanky and do some decent right-click damage as well, so not surprising to see him taken out of the pool. Uh, I was watching DK versus IG in mm -hmm. the, Ten um, to go. oh, what was it, WCPG or something like Five that, seconds. and um, mm -hmm. they, oh, that was great, it was a best of seven, so I'd recommend yeah. you guys, if you want to go watch that, Reserve Beyond the Summit, time. is uh, IG versus DK, that was an epic series, so... If, uh, yeah, you want to go catch that after this, but of course we are here for the First Blood Indian uh, uh, Dota 2 Dyer's tournament. Pick. It will be us, Licker, versus Born for Killing. And uh, I know who we prefer in the names, Mayor, uh, <laughs> so we'll, we'll have to try and not Radiant's cringe as we pick. say them. And uh, we can see Timbersaw, the Silencer, and the Rubik taken out of the pool. So Born for Killing gone very, very standard with uh, the Timbersaw and the Bristle being taken out. But uh, Rubik and Silencer, Radiant's definitely band. don't see Silencer taken out often. Very annoying to go against as a Spectre, let me tell you that. And uh, the Dyer's Spell band. Stealer, I'm wondering if that's a targeted ban. I think it is, because um, AL, they seem to have actually picked up the Trion Protector as well as the Magnus, so the Silencer as well as the Spell Steal from Rubik, that's going to be huge if uh, BFK actually Damn picks them up, so you know, Silencer can just disrupt so many combos, the Magnus skewer into, a, into an RP, he can just silence and the Magnus is just standing there not knowing what to do. Yeah, fair enough. It is very annoying when you're reliant on a uh, big ability to start a team fight like Spectre's Horn, I'm just saying. Uh, and we can see Born for Killing have gone ahead and picked up Clockwork and the Alchemist. And of course, Alchemist is very, very popular, particularly in Southeast Asia because of the unstable concoction, single target stuns being layered upon each other. Very, very tough to deal with indeed. Of course, he could go carry, could go mid, uh, probably won't be off lane because there's a Clockwork. Dyer's could be bit. support as well. He is a fantastic roaming support. As uh, Outworld Devourer, Ancient Apparition, Templar Assassin, and Lich all taken out of the pool here. So uh, supports taking a little bit of the focus away. Ancient Apparition, I've never seen him played or banned uh, in, in high level play. I've seen him played awfully. So um, I, I'm, I'm wondering what that means for Born for Killing. They've gone for the Invoker, which of course means they've got the global pressure of the Sunstrike. I wonder if they uh, wanted the the global ultimate of Ancient Apparition removed yeah. because of that, or they just really don't like going against him. Dyer's pick. They probably just don't want to go against him. Um, they are going to pick up... BFK is going to pick up this pick. very, very uh, squishy Crystal Maiden here, so definitely don't want that AA being in the game itself, but I have to agree with you, it's not a very typical ban, and I'm just really, really surprised now that BFK, they, did, they didn't pick up the Mirana um, along with the Alchemist. Usually if they get like the first two picks, you know, they tend to pick up Alchemist and then Mirana. So they have actually left Mirana in the pool and now Arslicker is going to pick her up. Yeah, well, I definitely like the synergy of a Moonlight Five Shadow seconds. initiation into Magnus blinking forward, reverse polarity, and skewering the entire team. There could be Reserve some time. very well-coordinated attacks there. Lich, not surprised to see him band out the, uh, the changes to the experience on Sacrifice, making that uh, very highly contested ban out. He doesn't actually win too much when I see him pick, to be honest, which that is very is funny. Bad. And Templar Assassin, that is typically played in mid. 
So I'm hmm? wondering if our slickers Radiance want band. to something for the mid that doesn't have to deal with roaming as Dyer's much. Pick. Yeah, they're probably gonna send Magnus mid lane, um, have him get his very fast yeah. level six, and then uh, after that, you know, have him roam around, help set up ganks as well. But you know, I'm really surprised that they didn't ban out Mirana at all, and mm. now they've chosen to pick up Mirana, and this will be huge for AL because they can do that combo that you just mentioned, the Moonlight Shadow into an RP, into a Skewer, and then of course, if the Skewer doesn't um, catch everyone, Trian Protector is going to be around with his, what's that called, with the, his Overgrowth? to actually oh, yes. stop everyone, and then it's going to be comboed so well with the Juggernaut Omni Slash as well. Oh man, <laughs> if you take a, uh, an Ag level 16 Juggernaut with Ag Sept, if you take an entire Omni Slash, you're not living. I don't care who you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very painful ability. I really do like the, the Juggernaut pick against the Alchemist. Of course, mm -hmm. with the untarget ability of the ultimate and then the magic immunity of Blade Fury Flurry. Or is it yeah no blade fury i had it right the first time that allows him to dodge the unstable concoction should he need to uh and then of course uh, we will shrug off the damage of sunstrike can uh, remove the frostbite of the crystal maiden so all around i think it's a very solid pick we can see pugna and earthshaker going to be the bands out for go. these guys earthshaker i definitely see why the arslick has wanted to remove that one they yep. uh, do not want to be dealing with the uh, the counter initiation of the the earthshake um echo slam would be pretty destructive as well. Darkseer picked up. Uh, I'm not sure why they've decided to go with that one. I guess uh, they thought Alki could be the carry, and they wanted to try and um, counter him with the Ion Shell. But Clinks will be the carry for uh, for Born for Killing. Well, to be honest, I think a Darkseer just fits so well into AL's lineup right mm. now. You know, if, if the RP misses at least one or two heroes, you know, the Darkseer is there to actually uh, vacuum everyone into into the wall. I mean, the RP is going to be used already, so he'll probably just vacuum and then into the wall. And that's going to be devastating. Ba basically, you know, BFK now, they are faced up with the potential of, a, of an RP and then a vacuum. And that's going to just be so, so much crowd control coming out from AL. Yeah, that's going to be very difficult to deal with indeed. So it's going to be up to Born for Killing to uh, attempt to not be caught in a 5v5. That's not that's not what they want. Uh, they do have Clinks who can move around the map very, very quickly, can uh, catch out people and assassinate them once he picks up the Orchid Malevolence. They do have the Sunstrike and they do have the Global Flare of Clockwork. So they've got a decent bit of counter-pushing if they wanted to attempt to pressure Arse Lickers or AL as we'll call them from here on out. Uh, they, they, like, like we said, they do not want to be caught out as five, or they will be in a bit, a bit of trouble, or more than a bit of trouble, a big amount of trouble. Yeah, but my question is right now, who can the Klings actually catch? You know, I mean, uh, if he catches the Juggernaut, maybe he can take him down, but the Darkseer might be there to actually um, search the Juggernaut away. Mirana and of course, has uh, living armor is global. So... Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. So, you know, who is he going to catch out? Um, I don't know if BFK, they might have overextended with the clings here. He needs quite a bit of farm. He needs that orchid to silence the any uh, any heroes on AL. And once he gets that orchid, he will be able to probably help his team out a bit in team fights. But he has to be very careful not to get caught out in the stuns, in the vacuum, as well as the RP. Yes, he's going to have to maximize the uptime on that strafe ability. Try and get as much damage out as he can. They do have quite a bit of stealth between the, uh, the Skeleton Walk, and I'm sure Invoke has Ghost Walk or something like that, uh, which will aid quite a bit. We're waiting for one of the members of BFK to reconnect. Uh, before we go over the players, may we just may uh, give a shout out to the sponsors, because of course these guys are enabling the tournament, and anyone who gets behind esports is A-OK -okay in my book. So, big thank you to Gamers Lounge, BTEC, and Neckbreak for uh, sponsoring the tournament financially. Thank you to AGL.T TV for uh, of course putting out the, the the tournament as well we will be covering the next two games over on their channel we'll put a link in just before we uh, close out this one uh, we've got another two games I do believe in this uh, double elimination tournament and while we wait may we may go over the team's names as we get the, the cool little side thing there hopefully we get some good stats out of you <laughs> 
Okay, so for the Arslickers, we do have on the Triant, who is uh, the very first Triant I've seen in a competitive game, so very much looking forward to this. It will be Stealth Fire, with some fancy lettering in his name. On the Darkseer, we will have Nocturnal King. King, just by itself, will be the Magnus in the mid. He will have a lot of pressure on him in this Wombo Combo lineup. JD will be the Marana, and the carry will be Postmortem on the Juggernaut. And over on BFK's side, we have Exist on the Invoker. He's going to go up against King on the mid lane. Feed on you on the Clinks, and I believe that might be an off lane Clinks. Um, it will be really strange though, um, because I do see that Punk on the Clockwork, he might go off lane as well. Mm. And we're going to see Stan in Hyphen on the Alchemist, and we're just waiting for for Hyphen to pick his hero there. So that's the yeah. custom to pick up. Okay, and uh, unfortunately he doesn't have any of the very awesome uh, headwear that Riley can come with. <laughs> Go ahead and, uh, oh, goes ahead and picks up the smoke of Deceit, immediately gets a point in the Crystal Nova, which tells me he wants some of the AoE damage. In the series I was talking about before, Maya, the DK versus IG, they loved fighting at level 1, and uh, the Crystal Nova was destructive as heck in those ones. As it uh, looks like your initial suspicions were wrong, because Clink's maybe oh actually i don't know maybe they're going a 2-1-2 two, two. yeah i think it we might see a roaming alchemist here ah okay that would be very cool yeah he does have that unstable concoction leveled up right now and it looks like we might see a 2-1-2 two, one, two, one, two, um but still we do see four people in the jungle uh in the radiant jungle right now so it's a bit dangerous i think for clockwork especially if he gets caught out by the mirana stun uh post mortem is going to come in on the juggernaut with his blade fury and then nocturnal king he does have that ion shell so that's going to be a lot of damage coming out from the these three heroes over here yeah yeah the uh the red team's <coughs> going to have to back out out of that one uh looks as though no i think it will be a standard 313 which uh looks like magnus may actually be going in the suicide lane by himself uh which means that marana will be going mid for the time being they could switch around but uh, marana mid that is very interesting i guess they uh they realized that the alchemist could be roaming quite easily and they want the leap of Marana available to get out of that, although of course Magnus can charge forward as well with the skewer. It's uh, going to be very interesting what happens in these uh, these three v one or three v one lanes. I kind of feel it's really because um, Exist on the Invoker is going up the lane, so they don't want the Magnus to go up against the uh, Invoker. That's definitely fair enough. Yeah, Invoker has the right click damage right now with those ex uh, with the point in Exhort. Yeah, and um, of course that does give you a lot of damage with the three of those. Against Marana, he may want to switch it up and go a little bit into the Wex tree. Get it, not Wex, sorry, Quas. Get a little bit of the health regen going up. Now, this combo, the Alchemist and the uh, the Crystal Maiden, that is a lot of point and click at shutdown should they manage to catch anyone out. Poor Magnus, not going to have much luck up here at all, getting zoned out at the uh, at the moment. We'll bring you up the, the last right. hits and denies. And down at the bottom lane, it looks like Punk sitting very happily next to the minions. Juggernaut isn't nearly as much threat as uh, the Clinks is for a Magnus, as uh, he does use that shockwave up top to get some farm. And wondering where the first blood will be. It's quite a defensive tri lane down at the bottom, which is uh, going to sit just fine with Punk, who has the cogs to get out should he need to make a getaway. That's right, and I just noticed something that this, I believe this ward over here is actually stopping the creeps from spawning. I just oh. I'll check on that in a bit, uh, because Nocturnal King I believe he's been trying to farm the jungle for quite a bit. Uh, once he gets his soul ring, then I think he might change up places with Magnus, and then Magnus can be a bit more offensive, get some last hits, get hit, uh, as well as getting his farm. No, that's that's definitely a good plan if they get that one up. But uh, at the start of the game, I was following stand-in on the Alki as he ran into the jungle by himself. I was thinking, oh, geez, that's uh, that's a bit dangerous with the enemy team all being there. But now it makes sense with that very sneaky ward going to be blocking out the camp if that is indeed what has happened as the second rune of the game has spawned it is illusion it is up at the top do either of the mids have their bottle not just yet a little bit too early to expect that and uh yeah i, I really like that ward mayor it's very smart yeah born for killing huh? they were born for denying the jungle as well <laughs> and 
<clears throat> right now it's pretty quiet. Um the entire map. However, mid lane JD dropping very low. There exists. He has that sun strike, but he's not using it just yet. He wants to force JD to be a bit lower, and uh, we might see the first blood coming out from the invoker here. Oh, we've got to keep in mind that there is a frostbite unstable concussion combo should it be needed. Arcane Aura has not been skilled in yet, so she is all about dishing out the damage, trying to uh, clear the jungle as quickly as she can. With uh, Feed on You on the Clinks is whacking away at the minions. Poor Magnus is, uh, what is he at? He's at three last hits, which is good as a melee against a, uh, a ranged opponent with uh, some more range as well. Sunstrike used in the mid to force JD back. But uh, Exist going to take some autos from the Marana and uh, dodge a sacred arrow there with, uh, let's have a look, 15 to 8 on Exist with Morana only at 4-2, so things definitely going BFK's way. And Go we have a smoke okay. gank here, Maya. As uh, looks like JD was getting out in time, BFK is going to get off the stun, and that will be enough for Stand In to get the first blood using the acid spray. That was very well done, Maya. I'm glad you pinged that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh wow, um, Stand BFK for hyphen, he actually got off the Nova in time and that actually slowed the Mirana around and I think she actually stopped to try to auto attack someone and that really just, you know, just caused the death that right there. Yeah, that is uh, going to be very difficult for our slickers to come back in. They've got an AoE composition, but if they can't get the experience needed to get the wombo combo in place, it will be very difficult for them indeed. They do have the Juggernaut, who is a very strong carry in his own right, but he relies on items a lot more than Klinks does. Klinks has that assassination. As soon as he picks up one item, Juggernaut needs more than one to be uh, completely effective. Uh, to be fair, they've got a decent bit of protection for him. Magnus able to RP the, um, the Vacuum from Nocturnal King and, of course, Living Armor. So there is a decent bit of protection, allowing him to go more into the, uh, the Battle Fury and then something like a Butterfly. But uh, yeah, our slickers, they need to they need to make something happen. They need to stop this uh, this invoker farming, or at least the clicks, because um, Clockworks Punk, he's third highest on the last hits, and he's in a three v one or three v two, really. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, what am I saying? One v two. There's not three Clockworks as awesome as that would look. <laughs> well, um, for me right now, AL really just needs to force this game to go into the late game. Um, BFK, what they really want to do is to end this game as early as possible because Crystal Maiden, she's going to be not as useful uh, towards the mid game as well as the late game. Yeah, that's definitely fair enough as well. Alchemist becomes quite decent with the right click damage as soon as he gets Chemical Rage, going to be whacking away at you. Punk actually going to go for a roam down at the uh, in the bottom part of the jungle. Definitely looking for Nocturnal King. Nocturnal King was very low earlier on, but uh, now not so much as uh, it doesn't quite have the Soul Ring just yet. Punk may come across him now. It does have the bottles, so if the uh, the bottom rune spawns in the next 20 seconds, he will be able to grab it, but it looks like the uh, the Triant Protector Stealth King going to be there to uh, defend him. Cogs yes, available for Punk means that uh, it's very unlikely that uh, the Arslickers will on. get anything out of this. But uh, Punk applying a little bit of pressure, he can't do much in the lane anyway at the moment. Yeah, and I'm just really surprised that the Darks here, he hasn't bought any wards to you know try to figure out what's stopping this camp from spawning. And it looks like this what might be let me just check no it's not um i thought it might actually stop this camp from spawning as well because yeah, it certainly like looks like this camp has not spawned any creeps at all well, we could see some more mid action here with uh, the support, it's going to chuck down the Observer Ward. There is no ward around, so JD just relying on his spidey senses at the moment. Does have Moonlight Shadow, which uh, will render him invisible. As uh, Alchemist is going to be coming in, does get stunned up. You're going to be hit by the Sunstrike. Cold Snap will uh, drop her low enough for a right click from Exist to pick that one up. JD going down once again, and BFK looking very strong in the mid lane at the moment with the Invoker, who's sitting on 2,000 gold. So he is. Uh, he could decide to go for anything at this point. Yeah, um, I kind of feel he might go for the Yo oh, Scepter. God. I've seen a lot of play um, like this coming out from the Southeast Asian team, so we might see the Yo Scepter into a Sunstrike, into a Deafening Blast, and uh, if need be, a uh, Chaos Meatball. And but if we do see Postmodern hooking in on, sorry, Punk hooking in on Postmodern. Shadow, Moonlight Shadow gets used as well, and he will get away to safety right now. That was really dangerous there. 
Yeah, the the Blade Fury was nicely timed and of course mitigated the battery assault damage. I don't know if the Moonlight Shadow was uh, completely necessary, but it doesn't have the longest of cooldowns. We'll be up in uh, 140 seconds or even less now. As uh, we can see, the Hand of Midas has been finished up on Feed on You. I believe that was a 6 minute Midas, so he is looking very good on the farm. As the Purple Pings come out from Postmortem on the Juggernaut, signaling that the supports have left the lane. Nocturnal King is very low. He's got to be careful here. Unstable concoction going to explode in Standard's face. Crystal Nova will land from B4, but uh, it forces them back. It doesn't get any kills, but the supports have so much presence as the Sacred Arrow will whiff past them. Yeah, and right now, you know, AL just doesn't have map control in terms of the number of wards that they've placed. Uh, I mean, they have one here look overlooking the room, but and they have one here trying to figure out where the supports are going to come in. We might see another engagement here right now. Oh no, they really want to go in on this. Oh, Living Armor has been popped onto Nocturnal King in case he uh, takes any blows to the face. Stand-in has uh, popped the Unstable Concoction. Iron Shell is onto Stand-in. Nice second arrow onto B4, but the uh, Unstable Concoction will get Nocturnal King low enough for the Acid Spray to take him down. Postmortem gets a nice RNG crit right there. Does have it at level 2. 20% chance does hit Crystal Maid. Nice Sunstrike <laughs> by Invoker to pick up Marana. And now Stand-in and Exist are here to try and do some cleanup duty. Ends up being a 3-for-1 in BFK's favor, currently sitting at 1 for 5, and uh, I want to point out the, the rocket from Punk did a decent chunk of damage in that fight, 120, so able to uh, contribute despite not being in the fight at the start, will uh, drastically tip the XP scales and the gold scales in Born for Killing's favor. That's right, and looking at the net worth itself, Invoker is the highest at right now, 4,500 net worth. And closely followed by the Clinks, who has been farming, free farming top lane, I might I might add as well. Yeah, and with a Midas. He's going to yeah, be exactly. Big. Oh, Sunstrike lands in the mid. Nocturnal King going to be taken down. Their deafening blast was not even used. I think he may have used an EMP or something existed, sorry which uh, allowed him to get the stun off, but uh, that Sunstrike was fantastically done. Of course, Sunstrike does uh, decent damage spread out between everything it hits, but if it only hits one person, it will chunk you the heck down. And now we can see Midas being finished up on the uh, Invoker as well, and Radiant Medallion of Courage finished up by uh, the yeah, Alchemist who's using the Chemical's Rage to farm up now. the Ancients there. Bottom lane, we can see Punk going to be going in 1v2. Poor Postmortem can't get in because of the Cogs holding him back. And now we can see BFK coming in. Will it be enough? Moonlight Shadow will not save uh, poor Trian Protector from the Wrath of Punk who takes a lot of damage from Juggernaut, but will not be enough. They uh, put their kill lead to 6 to BFK and uh, the game's certainly in their control now, Maya. Exactly, and I'm just looking at the Crystal Maiden's um, skill build right now. It is a bit different from what I would have skilled here. The arrow gets thrown out here by JD, but lands on a creep. Poor cast a minion. <laughs> that's he didn't right. I, think, I think that's the second creep that the Mirana has landed the arrow on. <laughs> oh, these caster, these caster creeps never saw it coming. Chemicals Rage can be popped by stand in as uh, Bing can he skewer his way out of there? No, Sunstrike will land, does a huge amount of damage, but stand in can't finish this one off by himself. Living Armor was popped there on uh, on or well, by the tree and protector, somewhat mitigates the medallion of courage armor reduction. But uh, BFK, you, you were saying, Maya, that they need to end this game quickly. They're certainly on the right track to do so. They're going to have a destructive as heck mid game with not only the economic lead, but uh, they're just going to be ahead in experience. As we see in the mid lane, stand in, going to be hit by a sacred arrow. JD leaps in, King going to skewer as well. Reverse polarity has been used. Stand in, going to try and uh, use the unstable concoction to get them off and does throw it out before it explodes in his face. That would have actually killed him. Chemicals Rage going to be popped there as exists. Just going to right click down the poor Magnus, who never got a chance to get any items because of where he started off. As uh, well, of course, if they wanted to do what you said, May and Nocturnal King, it looks like they have swapped, but it is definitely too little too late. Magnus way too far behind to be any kind of presence in the fights just yet. As uh, We'll actually have a look at his um, his current goal. I don't know where I put that. <laughs> um, so, current goal for Magnus? Yes. It's 700. <laughs> just so about, he, yeah. he's, he's a little bit far away from his blink dagger. It would be safe to he's, say. 
very far away, unfortunately. He has only one bottle and a stout shoe as well as a boots of speed. So the clings really just forced him out of the lane. And the supports as well, you know, they they decided, you know, the Magnus is not going to happen. Uh, the Magnus is not going to do anything to our clings in mid lane, uh, in top lane. So we are just going to keep roaming and get the kills for our team. Oh, this is very bad for the AL team. So, well, at least uh, if the, the, the silver lining in this is that we may not have to say their name again. <laughs> but of course, <laughs> they will have a chance to redeem themselves after this game with, uh, if the double elimination is how this tournament is going. Stand-in has been all over the map, and he will go down to the bottom post-mortem, just hiding in the trees at the moment. His Moonlight Shadow will be popped as, uh, at the top like lane. Looks cool. like uh, Clink's not going to be able to get the assassination off onto Nocturnal King. We did see the Yule Scepter finished up mm -hmm. for the uh, for the Invoker as Stand-In may get jumped on. Hit does pop the Chemical Rage, so they've got to burst through it as uh, Punk going to be coming in. Pops the Cogs King. Can he attack the Cogs to get out? No. Going to take way too much damage as uh, the Tram Protector going to come in. Exist is unstoppable, taking down the poor Darkseer and double kill for Punk as Tram Protector will also fall a 3-4-0. Uh, and uh, time quickly running out for AL to make a return Radiant kill. All they have Radiant. is a kill on the Juggernaut. Yeah, we might see a 4 for nil kill now. Invoker in mid lane up against waiting for Mirana to actually just show herself once more. JD's just gonna back off now and post mortem. Gonna farm up mid lane. He's gonna get caught up here. Ill Scepter and then the... Oh, the Sun Strike does so much damage. The Chaos Meatball though doesn't really add too much on him and he's just gonna spin away. Yep, spin to win, says the Juggernaut, as he barely escapes that combo that you mentioned before. With uh, He's just putting that to great effect. Has Midas and Yule Scepter only 14 minutes in. The smoke has been Radiant popped by himself. And for Dash to go down to the bottom tower, there is a Siege Creep there on full health. There's a Siege Creep in the mid, going to be taken down by Nocturnal King. But he's not going to arrive at the bot in tower. time to Pretty save it, right although... The, the tower is being uh, saved for now as Red Team just hanging around. There goes the Forge Spirits to tank up some hits. Orc and Malevolence finished up by the Clinks, who barely dodges a <laughs> Sacred Arrow there by running in a straight line. And a bottom tower really will fall, making that two pieces towers. of infrastructure for the beyond, Born for Killing. I was going to say Beyond the something, but I don't know where I was going to go. <laughs> yeah, um, looking at the hero levels right now, we have four heroes um, oh, from the other side. Yeah, oh, here we go, post modem. he's gonna oh, spin out right now. We do see a blink dagger on the Alchemist here, and he will throw out his stun. The right clicks go out, and that is a wicked kick. If the spin had lasted another half second, he would have yeah. been okay. Oh, Hookshot okay. is going to land from Punk, as uh, Nocturnal King is locked up there. Cogs will force him away. Moonlight Shadow has been popped, as well as the Wall of Refraction, but it will be much too, a little too late. Force up has been finished up by the uh, the Invoker. Punk going to take a lot of damage from the Reverse Polarity. JD right-clicking away there. Massive stun goes off. I think that was Overgrowth. No, he doesn't actually have it just yet. But uh, nice kill for AL. It will make the second kill of the game. The combo will go down onto King by Exist, but he will survive it. For the time being, no, he will get stunned up by Crystal Maiden, or well, not stunned, more snared, and exist right clicks his way to victory. There, Midas on the Crystal Maiden, who is by far the lowest hits. level member of our team, and that may be all she wrote for this one, as all over the map, BFK have control. Top towers and bad yeah, and I was saying that, you know, um, AL's lineup, they are very dependent on the level 6s, I think you've mentioned that as well. They and need to right go in now, together. They're being caught out on their own and they just can't do anything. Yeah. They're trying to find space for the Juggernaut to farm, but the thing is that, you know, they are coming all mid lane, then it throws out the stun there. Look at the amount of damage coming out from his stun. Yeah, that is that is a lot. So, uh, yeah, you're saying they're trying to create space for the Juggernaut, but there's no space to be had. Exactly, and you know, they are just hunting whoever's alone. The clinks, if you go out by yourself, oh, here we go, four staff exists there. Well, you after the Nocturnal King and the Sun Strike there. A desperate attempt to escape the vacuum exists. He needs to pop his Ghost Walk right now. No, he doesn't have it. Exhorted at the moment. Exhort will come up in a second. Nice shockwave there. Going to pick that one up. That was actually an Omni Slash that got him that low from post-mortem. Popped it on stand-in and got that going. I don't know why there are green things coming out of uh, out of stand-in. It might be the, what the... Um, oh, yeah, it is. Leech Seed. Yeah. Yeah. I don't actually know what Tram Protector does. <laughs> 
Uh, he is finally level 6 though, this Trian Protector, so he will be able to use his Overgrowth in team fights right now. So I'm waiting to see if there will be an there will be a huge wombo combo here. I mean, Juggernaut's used his Omni Slash, so he will not have that in the next 90 seconds. Okay, so they have to take care of Exist on the Invoker. That That's who they have to catch in that combo. Speaking of Exist, going to be laying down the combo on Nocturnal King Lance perfectly as uh, King skewers in, gets the reverse polarity off, and just so I was saying, Exist is the biggest threat. He gets lower and lower standing, going to blink off. Juggernaut using the Moonlight Shadow to sneak up, gets a crit off. Will Exist go down? No, he invokes the Ghost Walk and pops it to get out of there as all uh, well, the Stealth Magnus going to use... Uh, oh no, he didn't have the Invisibility Rune, but he will get out of there. Yeah, must have been Moonlight Shadow as exist lower and lower. I was going to say, Maya, that if mm -hmm. they get the Wombo combo off, they have to take Radiant Exist down. And Magnus by himself day. basically almost killed Exist, so there it's possible, but again, the, the skirmishes were too spread out for them, like they were too spread out for the fight to go in, into that combo that they want, and again, a tier 2 at the bottom goes down, only one piece of infrastructure remains outside their base, and it is in the mid, which is pushing very hard, and the Forged Spirits allow that to... Uh, to take a lot of beats, a standing gonna blink in and just kind of wobble his way, waddle his way out. Postmortem is juking around right now, <laughs> trying to avoid that sun strike. Oh, fair enough, too. <laughs> Using the surge to try and avoid it. Does Invoke have the sun strike on his bar? He does indeed. And has plenty of Midas to use it. Midas about to come up for him. Double damage rune on the clinks. Looks like it will be going to solo the Roche. Roche is uh, dying very, very quickly to the. Um, what is his name? I think Strafe or something. As a bottom lane, this may be them going in. JD going to take a sun strike, but Clockwork will jump in and take that one for himself. Post mortem doing a lot of damage. Yule Scepter bit is used by the Invoker. Wall of Refraction goes off, and Darkseer going to uh, use the Ion Shell on Song to pick that one up. No, I actually had Ion Shell somewhere else, so it must have been the Wall of Refraction clone. Currently a one for two in AL's favor. They're brilliantly using the uh, the lack of clinks to, uh, oh no, actually, Clink's got in, no, he died to Roshan. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so, he did. <laughs> three for really one. really unfortunate. Three for one, no, four for one with the Alchemist oh, cool. going down. Beautifully done by the Arslickers. That was very greedy About of time. Born for Killing to go in like that, get their Invoker caught as uh, Clink's was off dying to the Rosh. Yeah, I kind of feel that um, BFK, they were that too a, greedy. That's a courier. What's a courier doing there? He has a Hyperstone on him. Oh, I think he was trying to buy something. Uh, this is Stan Inns, the Alchemist, so he is going to build towards that AT really, really soon. Oh man, this this for a support Alchemist who didn't have Grievel's Greed for ages, he's rolling in the money. He is. I think he, he's gotten like 2 kills and 10 assists, so that really helped him a lot. Yes. And he's kept up in XP as well without really farming, just making the, uh, the ganks work, and he's done some brilliant blinks in to initiate, but that last one definitely questionable. They were missing their carry. Uh, the AL did a beautiful job of catching the Invoker out, and uh, Yul said there was not enough to save him. I think he got one kill before he went down, and that was the only casualty for AL. So they've got a little bit of breathing room the here, as Roche does Roche. eventually go down. It took an Invoker there, and uh, of course Invoker going to pick himself up the Aegis of Immortality. So the second, the, 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 the previous fight not going to happen a second time, uh, unless some more greediness comes out from Red. I do kind of feel that this Clink's pick up right now, um, you know, because we see such a wonderful Invoker being played by Exist here. This Clink's is really just to threaten AL and say that, hey, you know, if you guys try to buy space for a Juggernaut to farm, I'm just gonna hunt, I'm just gonna hunt post Mortem down. I have a skeleton there. Exactly, Spooky and skeleton. you know. Oh, actually, we've seen the Moonlight Shadow go out by AL. They've decided they want to try and engage a skewed fight. Can we see this combo that we talked about exist? Going to be followed. He does have the Aegis. He's going to walk right into the middle of the AL team. And oh, they're going to be thrown away there. He, uh, the, a, the RP will miss there. No one going down on BFK just yet. Chaos Major does a massive amount of damage. Mirana will fall in exchange for the Alchemist as a punk going to be hit by the shockwave of King. Nice blink out there from Magnus. And uh, oh, there has been two for one at the moment. Klinks is uh, 
trying to join the fight here. Gets the Orchid of Malevolence off on King, throwing Flaming Arrow after Flaming Arrow with, uh, oh, I thought the Rocket Flare got that, but it did not. And the Juggernaut will fall at the end. So that was such a nice opportunity for AL. They seized it perfectly, but then the execution, I think they, uh, the poor JD on Marana, he kind of auto-attacked and gave it away. And uh, yeah. was able to force stuff his way out before being caught in the RP. If it had been reverse polarity, that would have looked a lot different. Exactly, and you know what? They were fighting on this ramp itself. I didn't. I don't really like fighting on ramps because you have vision. very limited vision, and it was night time as well. So, you know, AL. I think they had some team members on the slope and off the slope itself. So it was really difficult for them to coordinate there. But it was beautiful play. Um, they did the really great wombo combo there. It was really unfortunate that the creeps came in, and here we go. The shot. Ah, oh, God. That was over before I could call it out. <laughs> yeah. Boy, that was a lot. Mechanism gonna be popped by, I assume, the Crystal Maiden. Is, uh, no, who actually has the mechanism? Oh, there it is, Clockwork. So, fair enough, Funk's picking up the mech for his team. Midas going to be utilised by Postmortem there. A little bit too little, too late at the moment, though. 11, 2, and 6, Invoker, 8, 2, and 6. Clockwork as Sacred Arrow goes out does not Radiant hit anything. Mid Haven't seen many apart. Sacred Arrows land because most of them have been blind. And uh, the red team is very fast. Shockwave gonna hit Exist in the face. And he'll laugh that one off. Has three points in Quas, so gonna regen up quite quickly. And uh, like you said, Mayor Clinks is just providing the side pressure. And he gets into the fights in time to do something. He has picked up the Divine Rapier. So they're. Oh, BFK. Wow, I, that. <laughs> I think they realize that they need to end this quickly. Um, this is really a dangerous pickup by Feed on You here. Oh, he's, he's I don't so like it. Radiant. If he yeah, gets we, caught in reverse uh, polarity, he's gone to right now. Exactly, we're gonna see the Moonlight Shadow here right now. Oh, as exists is in the middle of the enemy team. Can they CC him? No, he will. You'll step to his way out. Omni Slash is gonna hit other members of the BFK team. Aegis will. Barely be popped there by the tower. Quas was almost gave the regen that was needed. Punk shots his way and picks up his killing spree by taking down Nocturnal King. That is the Aegis popped. Meanwhile, up at the top, Clink's gonna pick up that uh, that tier three along with the barracks. So Strafe just monstering down the uh, or monstering down the buildings there. And this may be what BFK will look for. Sacred Arrow will land on to exist. Can he get out of this one? Blade Fury will be popped. Tries to force stuff his way into the trees and. And is now uh, stealth inside the trees. No, <laughs> postmortem going to. Uh, I think that might have been King using the dust of appearance there. Invoker instantly going to buy back and uh, has himself a blink dagger. As uh, the rest of BFK gonna take down the tier three in the mid along with the melee racks. But uh, their invoker is gone for the time being, is sprinting his way up, Radiant and the last barracks will now be worked on by that Clinks, who is just doing monstrous amounts of damage. It's not actually yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think in the previous engagement there, I believe the Magnus missed his RP. Uh, Basically, he RP'd no one. If I checked, if I if I checked properly, <laughs> it was terrible. And um, yeah, lots of cheeky play coming out from BFK right now. The Alchemist just stunning, uh, blinking in to stun and then casually walking back just... out. Yeah, yeah, just walking out. It was a, it was a nice uh, thought by Exist to soak up Look some cooldowns with the Aegis, but uh, he did go down. So uh, in the end, which uh, the Aegis being wasted there with uh, a decent initiation. Oh, shots going to land and take down the Dark Seer train. Going to be oh just absolutely demolished by Clinks here. A standing going to sprint his way forward. Boo. Oh, look at Clinks that. going to just secure the second kill there. He's just force stuffing his way out of the base after throwing down a wall. And Nocturnal King going to throw out the GG. So, oh, oh, hookshot yeah. lands as round one will now finish for uh, the first blood Indian Dota 2 tournament, Mayor. That's right. And uh, this was really a very quick game. I didn't expect this game to go so quickly. Um, then again, we haven't casted any Indian games before, so hopefully the next few games... Maybe they're like the opposite of the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Southeast Asian teams, they kind of have like two different styles. One is the very Chinese typical style where you farm for like 40 minutes and then, you know, <laughs> eat the base after. That's but, so exciting. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And then um, the, the other style is 
20 minutes, finish, and then go on to the next game. Yeah, go on to keys. Well, 26 minutes is what it took for uh, Born for Killing to take that one away. We had the uh, Aghanim Scepter Clockwork. We had three Hand of Midas's and uh, an Alchemist who went absolutely... Oh, no, that's a Medallion of Courage. That's not a Midas. Oh, no, there is a third Midas. There we go. I thought the Medallion was a Midas, but they... <laughs> Okay, so before we head into Game 2 Mayo, which will be on uh, AGL TV, uh, okay. we're going to have to nominate an MVP. So who are you thinking? Um, I kind of feel it might be the Alchemist, yeah? Yeah, I was just about to say, stand in on Alki. He did a great job. Exactly. Apart from like one initiation that cost three of his team members' lives, <laughs> it's, uh, it was spot on apart from that. So I'll have to agree with you. That's right. Okay, so uh, hopefully we uh, get to see the AL team. We uh, th that's what they can be called. Hopefully they are able to redeem themselves and uh, continue in the tournament. And we're looking forward to more from Born for Killing, as uh, we're going to go ahead and move into the second game of this round one. That's right. So we'll be right back and see you guys at AGL TV. Okay. Uh, yep. Catch you guys. This is Maya and Coldblood signing out.